Okay, so here they're saying that the constant A in Van der Waals equation is maximum in He, H2, O2 or NH3, right? So what is A? A is nothing but your pressure correction term that you have in the Van der Waals equation. And what does this pressure correction term depend upon? So it depends upon your amount of intermolecular attraction, right? That is your A is directly proportional to how much intermolecular attraction or intermolecular attractive forces you have, correct? So first thing, very simply, you can say is that as the molar mass of the given gas will increase, you can say that the intermolecular attraction will increase because van der Waals forces will increase, correct? That is one way. But you need to understand that here you have helium, hydrogen, oxygen, NH3. Which means here O2 has the maximum molar mass, that is 16 gram per mole. Whereas ammonia has 17 gram per mole. I am not even considering HE and H2, they are 4 gram per mole, 2 gram per mole. Very light gases in front of this oxygen and ammonia. Okay, so it's between oxygen and ammonia. So you can just, if you simply look at this part of it, then you will say that option C is the right answer. Oxygen will be the one in which your A value is maximum. But you are uh, forgetting that here you have ammonia which has hydrogen bonding. It has intermolecular hydrogen bonding which is a much stronger force of attraction than van der Waals forces of attraction. Correct? So here what happens is that in ammonia you have intermolecular hydrogen bonding. You have nitrogen which is a highly electronegative element attached to hydrogen. So here there is a perfect... Uh, you know, chance for a del plus on hydrogen and a del minus on nitrogen. Similarly, let's say I have another ammonia molecule, right? So here again, you will have a del minus and here you will have a del plus, which means there, this is the perfect opportunity for this sort of a hydrogen bond to exist, right? Because of which ammonia has a very strong presence of intermolecular hydrogen bonding and between oxygen and ammonia, if you have to compare, yes, ammonia, NH3 will be the one to take the cake for maximum intermolecular attraction and hence maximum value of van der Waals constant A because of intermolecular hydrogen bonding. That is the fundamental idea here. So option D, NH3 is going to be the right answer to this question. Alright, so here they're saying which of the following hybridization has only one type of bond angle, right? What does it mean? Which type of hybridization can have two different types of bond angles? Let's see, if you, if, you know, it's not able to rack your memory and, you know, you can't think of it right now, let's look at the options and maybe we'll get some ideas from there. So you have option A, sp2 hybridization. So sp2 hybridization warrants for a trigonal planar shape, which means here you will have 120 degrees bond angle, right? It's a planar shape. Uh, you're going to get a planar molecule with bond angle of 120 degrees, right? This is what your molecule will look like. If I'm drawing an MA3 type of a molecule, it'll look like this and this will be 120 degrees and each angle will be 120 degrees. There's no different bond angles, okay? Cool. Then you have sp3 hybridization. So here, what's going to be your bond angle? Do you remember? 109 degrees 28 minutes 27 minutes or you can simply write 109.5 degrees okay so i'm drawing an ma4 type of a molecule right so there will be one wedge and one dash here okay so this one second so this bond here right any two bonds between them they will have a bond angle of 109.5 degrees i'm writing 109.5 because that's an easier value to go with. All of it is perfectly acceptable. Okay? And all your four bond angles are going to be equal as long as you have MA4, right? Instead of, uh, if you have MA3B or MA2B uh, to something like that, then yes, we will talk about different bond angles. But here, bond angle will be 109.5 degrees and all your bond angles are going to have the same value as long as it is MA4 that we're talking about. Okay, now we have sp3d. 
So in case of SP3D, SP3D uh, hybridization occurs when you have an MA5 type of a molecule like your PF5, correct? So here you have an M and you have three bonds in the plane, one above and one below. Okay, due to space constraints, I'm not drawing it properly. Let me just do this. Okay, so now you have two different kinds of bonds here. You have three A molecules in, uh, sorry, three A atoms in the plane and two A atoms, one above and one below. Okay, they are perpendicular to the plane. So here, what happens? In the plane, you have a bond angle of 120 degrees, whereas perpendicular to the plane, here you have a bond angle of what? 180 degrees. Here you have a bond angle of 90 degrees. So yes, you do have different bond angles here, which is very, very important. SP3D is the one that has different bond angles. Generally, we write it as 120 degrees and 90 degrees. Okay, great. So this is what we have. So you can see SP3D is the one that has different type of bond angles, right? And this is what we were talking about initially. Okay, so now question is asking which it should have only one type of bond angle. So that is the case with options A and B. SP2 and SP3 hybridizations, right? So option D, both A and B is going to be the right answer to this question. Okay, so here we have a question from the chapter Ionic Equilibrium. This is saying that HX is a weak acid whose Ka is given to us as 10 to the power of minus 5. They are saying that it forms a salt Na NaX of concentration 0.1 molar on reacting with caustic soda, right? Caustic soda is nothing but your NaOH. What is the percentage of degree of hydrolysis H of NaX? This is what they are asking. So basically find out H multiplied by 100. That's it. That's your answer. Okay. So what is the first thing we need to know? First thing we need to know is how do you calculate uh, KH? right? KH is nothing but KW by KA. Okay, it is KW by KA, which is, what is KW? KW is going to be 10 to the power of minus 14. That's a constant value that we take. So you have 10 to the power of minus 14 divided by KA, which is given to you as 10 to the power of minus 5. So this is your 10 to the power of minus 9. KH value is 10 to the power of minus 9. Then what else do we have? We have to calculate H. Right, so H is nothing but under root of KH by C. Okay, I'm using the formula directly. So here you have KH, which is 10 to the power of minus 9. But C is not given. Is C given? Yes, it's right here, right? 0.1 molar. So this will be 10 to the power of minus 1. This will be under root. So basically you have 10 to the power of minus 8 whole to the power of 1 by 2, which is 10 to the power of minus 4. This is your H and what did I tell you? What will the final answer be? The final answer will be H into 100, which is nothing but 10 to the power of minus 4 plus 2, that is 10 to the power of minus 2 or 0 0.01 as suggested by option A. So option A 0 0.01 is going to be the right answer to this question. Alright, so here they're saying that if a proton, electron and an alpha particle are moving with the same kinetic energy, then the order of their de Broglie wavelength is going to be what? Okay, interesting question. So generally, we know the formula for the Broglie wavelength is lambda is equal to h by mv. But here they are talking about it in terms of kinetic energy. And I'm sure you, sh uh, you know, you have the formula on your fingertips, even if you don't please don't worry, don't panic about it because this is what we've learned, right? We'll start from the first principles and we will derive it even if we cannot remember a certain formula. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, you know that kinetic energy or I'll just call it K for now. Okay, so your kinetic energy K is equal to half of mv square. Okay, I want you to multiply m on both sides. So you will get k into m is equal to half of mv whole square or m square v square. Okay, now I will write it as 2km is equal to mv whole square or mv is equal to under root of 2km. Correct? Why did I convert it like this? Because I know that lambda is equal to h by mv. So I want to write 
instead of mv i want to use this value i want to use this equation so now my final formula for the broy wavelength is equals to this okay they are telling you that uh, all these three particles have the same kinetic energy so your k is a constant 2 is a constant h is planck's constant so that's also a constant which means your lambda is going to be inversely proportional to root m this is what you get now let's use this and find out an order so you have lambda is inversely proportional to 1 by root m sorry lambda is directly proportional to 1 by root m or inversely proportional to root m now you have to find out uh, the order of their masses first of all so you have proton you have electron and you have alpha particle so electron will be the least followed by proton followed by alpha particle why did i say this because alpha particle is nothing but a helium nucleus he2 plus so what is inside the nucleus of a helium you have two protons and two neutrons i'm talking about he4 not any other isotope okay so when i talk about he4 it has two protons and two neutrons okay and i can say the mass of a proton and a neutron is approximately the same which means mass of a nu uh, uh, helium nucleus or mass of an alpha particle is four times that of the mass of the proton okay so this is the order that i'm going to end up with in terms of masses so mass of electron is less than mass of proton is less than mass of alpha particle take a root throughout okay nothing will change now you have to take the inverse of this because that is going to be the order of our de broglie wavelength so you will have 1 by each of this right and 1 by this is going to look like this which means the order of the de broglie wavelengths will be this is greater than this a is greater than this so electron will have the maximum the broglie wavelength followed by proton followed by alpha particle because of their masses right where do you see this order this order is here in option c which means option c is going to be the right answer to this question okay so here considering the elements fluorine chlorine oxygen and sulfur the correct order of their electron affinity values is going to be what right so what is electron affinity electron affinity is basically the readiness of an atom to be able to accept an electron right or how much you know an atom is willing to accept an electron when you uh, try to introduce it or m plus electron gives you m minus how readily is this reaction happening how willing is the atom to let this reaction happen fundamentally that idea right so what do we know about electron affinity we know that as we move from left to right across a period the electron affinity what increases correct so the electron affinity increases as you move from left to right however as you move from top to bottom in a group the electron affinity decreases right the willingness of the atom to accept the electron decreases fine so here you have fluorine chlorine oxygen and sulfur this is how you would see it in the periodic table which means the order that we are expecting is that this and this correct or it increases like this and like this yeah so this is fine so fluorine will be the maximum followed by followed by uh, let's see followed by oxygen followed by chlorine followed by sulfur this is the order that you would expect right and let's see if this order is there in our options so i have maximum fluorine followed by oxygen followed by chlorine followed by sulfur this is the order that i'm expecting and yes that is here in option a right but be very careful this is not the order that we get this is the not the observed order of electron affinity the observed order looks something like this so chlorine is going to be maximum followed by fluorine followed by sulfur followed by oxygen okay and here you have one very important a very uh, you know a trivial thing at play what is that that is size right so oxygen and fluorine are very small okay because of which the incoming electron faces interatomic electronic repulsions right sorry it will be intraatomic 
intra-atomic electronic repulsions means what means let's say in oxygen you already have how many eight electrons right and you have a you have those eight electrons over a very small volume correct and then you're sending one more electron go 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 inside this oxygen atom so what happens that electron faces a lot of repulsions and there is not enough volume for you to optimize these repulsions okay so that repulsion is going to ensure that oxygen and fluorine respectively have lesser electron affinity than sulfur and chlorine because of which this is the order that we get and I expect you to remember this very important thing that chlorine is the element with the highest electron affinity in the entire periodic table right so the order that we do observe is chlorine maximum followed by fluorine followed by sulfur followed by oxygen in terms of electron affinity and we see that in option c so option c is going to be the right answer to this question